I can't take this anymore. I don't belong here. I don't belong here. Relax, they're gonna put you back on the meds and you'll be comatose again in no time. Besides, it's kind of nice here. I check myself in once a month. You check yourself in. I didn't, I was committed. My wife committed me here. I take things too far, I'm crazy. I took it too far with Moose. I take it too far with Dreamer. I just take it too far. This is all I hear. I had a guy once who stole my girl. You saw what I did to Dreamer. I had another guy who pissed me off. I took his wife, I took his kid. I did everything to him. You have not gone far enough. I love Totina's pizza rolls. Yo, right now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Total Nonstop Impact Impact Talk for Impact fans, brought to you by the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, all with my co-host Kyle. Kyle, say hello. Teed up from the feet up constantly, looking so fly. Uh, 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 uh. Well, Trent, you know I never say anything. I just click a sound bite here. A hip oh, offense. That's true. That's true. A hip offense. Hey, so anyway, what's up, everybody? We're back this week. We're here to talk Impact Wrestling, as always. Your weekly review. The guys you can count on to bring it all to you. And we're going to be talking about the December 6th episode of Impact Wrestling Live from Sam's Town in Las Vegas. And with that intro, Kyle, we're going to jump right into the YouTube comments, which is something we always do weekly, which is something I know you like to do. It strokes your ego a little bit. So Love uh, it, man. Come on. we got to interact with the loungers, man. The Impact absolutely. Tribe. Our family. Impact, absolutely. These guys are our family. Every week. You guys come back and give us amazing feedback. We love it. We learn from it. We take from it. We love you guys. We appreciate it. Interact with us. Anything you got to say, just just say it, man. We don't don't even hold back on being being assholes to us, right, Kyle? You you like people who are shitty to you, right? I think you kind of get off on it. Ah, I mean, <laughs> I I get off on being shitty to other people. Oh, okay, yeah, other way around. But hey, all right. So guys, let's jump into these YouTube comments. So that was uh, reviewing the week prior's episode of Impact Wrestling. That was the uh, November 29th episode at the time. So we're going in there, and we're going to jump in. First the first comment from Colby Cooper, big-time Impact fan, Colby Cooper. He says, Rebel versus Kira Hogan would be a bootyful match. Kyle, that is uh, that is a throwback to your list, your Kira Hogan, your, your booty list. That you left Kira Hogan off of and pissed everybody off in the process. No, 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 no. I, I didn't give her the number one spot. She had the number two spot. And I, <laughs> after we got the feedback, everybody kind of knocked some sense into me, Trent. And they were right. Kira Hogan does have the number one booty in Impact Wrestling. I was wrong. I'm uh, sorry, right. buddy. Fair I'm enough. Sorry. Fair enough. All right. Uh, we go to Critical Sting, who said, you know who would make a perfect alliance with Scarlett Bordeaux? The beautiful people. Good point. Maybe a return. They they returned to House of Hardcore this weekend, so we'll see. Uh, he also said, I see one dislike. Must be Jeff Jarrett. Slap nuts. Whoa. <laughs> I like that one. That, that popped me. I, I, I popped when I saw that comment. He also got eight likes for that comment. So, hey, good job, Critical Sting. Uh, we got another, uh, some more feedback here. Mike Larkin uh, cleared up a question for me that Raylan's husband is pro wrestler Dylan Bostic. Both great talents. I'm not familiar with Dylan Bostic. Are you, Kyle? Never heard of him. Never heard. I've heard the name. Never, never, never seen him wrestle. So thanks for th- jumping in and letting us know there, Mike. Uh, Roe jumped in and said the only thing great about Buff Bagwell was his blockbuster. But <laughs> the finisher. But he's a great show per usual, guys. Roe, thank you very much. This is Roe of the Roe and Adam show also on the Impact Lounge. Which we will, uh, we will be, we're gonna be working with Rowan Adam a little bit more going forward, guys. We're gonna have some, there's gonna be some cool stuff coming up with our partners here on the Impact Lounge. Uh, the J Rock Freak says, I was watching MLW a few days ago and there was Conan as a manager of the Lucha Brothers. So I wonder if there's a heel turn coming at Homecoming. Mm. Uh, I think we talked about that last week, Kyle. I think that sounds plausible. 
Good I word. mean, I didn't even think of the MLW connection. Uh, that that adds more uh, weight to the theory, Trent. It does. It does. Speaking of weight, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Dessalines says, Great review, dudes. A little disappointed that you didn't recognize that beautiful booty Kira has. It's quite oh, Come on. <laughs> They're not letting you off the hook, Cal. They're not letting you off the hook for this one. Keep it coming, guys. Keep 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 destroying Kyle on this list. <laughs> I made a bad judgment in booty, all right? All right. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> HSG Sabu 66 says brutal timing on the slap nut sound bite. Slap nuts. Right at the best time. If, if you, you only heard... knew what goes on in this head of mine, people. Oh, God. Hey, you know, I'm I love you, Kyle, but there's there's it's probably a good. It's a good reason. Good thing we we have miles between us because uh, <laughs> I'd probably be scared. I'd probably be scared. Uh, you don't know what my uh, my medical records uh, state, Trent. Oh, but all right. Whoopsie, Long Island's very own the legendary Whoopsie says number one. The crowd wasn't too hot at the start during the Sunday tapings, but got into it and got loud as the show moved on. Again, casual fans are important. I, I'm guessing Whoopsie was live at the show. He says, uh, impact. Whoa, 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 whoopsie, whoopsie. You Ooh. went to Las Vegas from Long Island where, you know, I live. You know, we're neighbors here on Long Island. You got the balls to go to Vegas and not bring your old pal Kyle? Is it because I said I wasn't going to put out? I yes. wanted to go. Kyle, you want a free trip to Vegas, you're going to have to do something for it, man. <laughs> whoopsie, Long Island's very own whoopsie is not taking you to Vegas for free. Well, I have a fourth year, Trent. Let me just state for future reference to all the uh, loungers and the uh, tribe members, everybody. Look, if if you're going to an Impact show, I don't care what state it's in, what town it's in, what country it's in. You're going to an Impact show. Hey, homecoming coming up. You're going to homecoming. Buy a ticket for Kyle. I'm broke. I will come with (laughs) you. I'll mooch (laughs) off your snacks. You can buy me beers. We'll have a great time together. So you're, what you're saying, Kyle, is we need to Saturday GoFundMe for take get Kyle the homecoming. Get Kyle the homecoming. I've talked about this, Trent. Take you, me with you. You're gonna kill me because uh, just today, Kyle, I finalized my my hotel for homecoming for Nashville. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? So that means I have what? What is the date for homecoming again, Trent? January what? January sixth. You got under a month. To get your ass to Nashville. So you're saying I have under a month to try to sabotage your relationship with your girlfriend to get her out of the ticket, right? I, I mean, listen, you can do it. You, the floor is yours, sir. Floor, I, I've got the pictures of her and Moose and the massage. I got the pictures. Oh, guys. All right. The, 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 moose, the moose and Nurse Nicole's massage. She's the personal nurse for uh, for Mr. Call Impact Wrestling. Our Bound for Glory review. Go check that out if you have no idea. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Joke was behind that. This is a thing that is carried from AEW to Impact Wrestling. This is, uh, yeah, listen, listen to the Bound for Glory review. It's featured on the uh, the Impact Lounge YouTube channel or on the, uh, the feeds on Apple and iTunes and Stitcher and whatnot. Take a listen. Get caught up. Throw your feedback down. Let us know what you think of that story. All right, a couple more comments. Let me, let me finish out Whoopsie here. He says, uh, Impact really hasn't shown the actual size of the crowd on TV. The stands were full when I went on Sunday, and they have darkened, and they have darkened the stands. So basically, yeah, I could tell that too. A couple of camera shots, you could tell the stands were full. They just have the lights off. They're doing like spotlight on the ring. Uh, he also says, I can't believe Tessa thinks it's okay to treat authority that way. Who raised her? What a Jezebel. You know who raised her, whoopsie, is her goddamn father, Tully Blanchard, who was the son of a bitch. The guy was the son of a bitch of all sons of bitches in wrestling, so that's where she learns from. So, uh, yeah, that's that's where it comes from. Tessa is learning from the son of a bitch. That's how she is the bitch. Say it, Kyle. Say it how you say it. The bitch. The bitch. Whoopsie also says that Jordan Grace wants in on the booty list. I don't think she does. I think she's upset that there was a booty list. He also says, who is impact management? I think this is, this is a callback to uh, when Don refers to impact management. I'm like, you're impact management. What the fuck are you talking about? Whoopsie is impact management. Whoopsie is also saying, I would like a killer cross t-shirt. This is going back to the contest. Guys, we were running a contest of impact wrestling merchandise. 
Kyle's going to give you those details before the show is over. But whoopsie saying, I would like a Killer Cross t-shirt because I am a catalyst for change in YouTube commenting and podcast participation. The Impact Lounge is also the catalyst for alternative wrestling coverage. It's a two-way street. You engage, we engage. I like that. Whoops, man. Whoopsie came in with the hot fire flame right there, Kyle. What do you think about that comment from Whoopsie? Whoopsie and Dancing Mike. They, they've really been the MVPs lately, Trent. Dancing Mike was out last, uh, you know, this that last week's show because he was in Disney World. So Whoopsie came in strong to take that take that spot. All right, a couple more. C. O'Connor says, "Block my account. I'll never look at New York style pizza the same way again." Kyle, it's a shot at you, pal. It's no, I would never. Kyle. And he says, I like that I like that you guys keep the show interactive, keep up the good work. As far as the X Division design, the original will always be my number one. But I also like the GFW era one. Uh, I'm with C. O'Connor on this one. I love the original X Division title. Thank you for the great feedback on the interaction, too. Appreciate that. Kyle, you got anything to say about that? He took a shot of your uh, your New York style pizza. What do you have to say? I would never block the guy. Come on. Just joking around here. <laughs> All right, just a few more, and we're going to jump into the show. The Chris Steele Show, who I mentioned, uh, who I believe previously mentioned he was from Chicago, or he grew up in Chicago. Hot Flaming Cheetos with Cheese or Doritos with Cheese is a hit, or and with meat is a hit. I grew up eating that as a kid, and for some reason stopped eating it a few years ago. I had some, and I was wondering why did I ever stop eating this? Been eating it that way ever since. I'm telling you, Chris Steele... From Chicago also. This was a thing we grew up on, man. Flaming Hot Cheetos doused in, che- in hot nacho cheese. I'm telling you, well, Kyle, you're missing I, out on this. I don't know, Trent. I mean, it was kind of like a, a cute little thing you, you brought up from your childhood, like, you know, going to school back in the day. But it's a little alarming and creepy that Chris is apparently still eating it. No, dude, it's good. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> delicious. Jamie Wisner says, I like the current title, but my favorite is the original with the red X in the middle and the NWA TNA on it. Classic. It'd be really cool if they bust that one out for maybe Homecoming. That'd be interesting. Uh, MC Tanman says, this was overall a boring show. I don't know if he meant our show or the Impact on Pop show. MC Tanman, I'd like I'd like you to clarify that, please. Yeah, hey, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, asshole. Nah, nah, you could say it. You could say it. Take, we, we want all the feedback. All right, last comment, Kyle. This is from Stephen Brockmeyer. He says, what's up with the Adam and Rose show? First, we had the original Impact review on the Impact Lounge. Then we get the Adam and Rose show along with the new Impact review hosts, which isn't my favorite, but I still had the Adam and Rose show. But wait a minute. No, I don't know what happened to the Adam and Rose show. With that said, I really wasn't a fan of Kyle and Trent, but I gave it another chance, and I'm starting to come around. All right, we're winning them over. Stephen Brockmeyer, with this damn review, we're going to win you over. And I want to know if we if we fucking got you back 100% if you're in with us now. Because this is going to be a flame-ass inter- review going on. Kyle, what do you think? Are we going to win this guy over today or what? Steve, Steve, Steve. listen to me, man. <laughs> you're, you've been a little indecisive lately, so I'm, I'm going to help you make a good decision here. All right? Listen to me. You're going to stick around. You're going to like us. <laughs> you're going to like Kyle and Trent. You're going to like Rowan Adam. You're going to like BQ when he's around once in a while, all right? You're going to like us. Stick is around. Safe, Kyle, is it safe to say he's going to like everything? That's right, Everything. Sammy. Everything. 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 Ev- yeah, everything. Everything. And I, I want to take this guy to a Dayton Bush party sometime. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what, what, what you just said there. I have no idea what you meant. All right. I Kyle, explained it in the episode, Trent. No, you must have missed him. It's not in my notes. We keep separate notes to keep things interesting. We keep it spicy, Kyle. We keep it spicy. We keep different notes, and we keep we, we throw different things at each other. It's like a game of tennis, back and forth, ping pong even. All right, before we jump into the review, Kyle, break down the contest we're running. Get it out now so they know they have to reply in the comments for the contest. Get the contest details to these people right now. Ho, 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 Impact Wrestling fans. Let me talk to ya. Let me talk to ya. This is Kyle from Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans. The weekly Impact Wrestling Review Show on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. I come to you folks today to tell you all about our Impactsmas giveaway. That's right. It's our first annual Christmas Impactsmas giveaway. What we are doing, folks, is we want to hear from all the Impact fans Hit us up on Twitter at We Talk Impact or go to one of our latest videos on YouTube on the Impact Lounge and in the comments, tell us 
why you love Impact Wrestling, and why we should choose you. Forget Don West this year, folks, because this Christmas, Kyle and Trent are going to be the brown bagsmen. We are going to send you a plethora of Impact goodies right off of shopimpact.com. You don't know what you're going to get. It's going to be a surprise. So one more time, hit us up on We Talk Impact on Twitter or go on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, get in the comments, and tell us why you love Impact Wrestling and why we should choose you. One lucky winner will be picked on December 25th. So, folks, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays, and keep supporting Impact Wrestling. It's a celebration tonight! Yeah! And great. There it is, guys. There's the details. The details of the contest. Enter to win. We are going to pick a winner at the end of the month going to give you some goddamn Impact merchandise. What more can you ask for? I love Impact merchandise. I spend a lot of money at shopimpact.com every year. I truly do. Kyle, I don't think you do. I think you're looking for looking for me to spend money on the on the on the loungers and on you for some reason this year. Well, but Trent, I, Trent, I know your family is of packy descent. I know there's some money in some oil cool. fields somewhere. I see you're mixing up two different things, Kyle. The the oil is the Arabs. The Arabs. The Pakistanis are different people. We're in other things. We're in technology, medical, things like that. Aww. You know, when when you got when you go to that see that doctor at the at the uh at the uh at the hospital and he's got that that beautiful, not quite as dark brown coat, but a nice caramel tone to him. That's the Pakistani doctor. Maybe Indian, but we're going with Pakistani. But the oil tycoon, that's the Arab guy. That's that's our neighbors. That's that's a neighbor to the Pakistanis. That's where we descended from. It's kind of like what England was to to America. Same thing. Well, Here's thank you for the lesson. history lesson there, yeah, Trent. Uh, there I'm you glad. Go. I'm glad that you can you know adjust my ignorance and uh, you know. How much have I taught you about brown culture since we started doing this podcast? I mean, via Gama and the whole Daisy Hit Squad. I mean, you're 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 pronouncing days. You were in Jamaica having having Pakistani food about two weeks ago. Am I wrong? And look at this guy. That's I, what I'm I, saying, I, Trent. Uh, I you cultured know, this kid. You're culturing me, you know? You, you really are. Beautiful. I'm proud of that. All right, guys, let's jump into the review. Let's get in on this. We are talking Impact on Pop live from Samstown in Las, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. The December 6th episode, Impact After Dark. We opened up with a qualifying match for the Ultimate X that's going to be taking place at Homecoming. Willie Mack versus Jake Christ. The mini draw who came out with Sammy Callahan, the draw. Sammy was really cheering on his best friend big time. Child, this is a good match. This was a clash of styles, though. Big time clash of styles. But I, I like the match. It, was, uh, it wasn't long. It wasn't big on story. But I think, in, if anything, Willie Mack looked great in a loss in this match. Uh, you know, better than, I mean, not better than Jake. But I think he didn't, he didn't look like Willie didn't look bad losing this match. What do you think? Well, he didn't look bad losing the match, Trent. But uh, what I got from it was uh, think about this here. OVE was there backing up Jake, but Rich Swan wasn't there backing up Willie. And as soon as the match was over, when uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mack were interacting, you saw Willie bring that up to Rich, you know, that, uh, oh, I got your back next week, definitely. So keep your eye on Willie Mack, man. Definitely keep your eye on Willie Mack. But uh, I, I really like how uh, Don Callis uh, compared him to, uh, was it uh, William uh, Perry? Yeah, the, the, refrigerator. Refri the refrigerator. Former Chicago Bear who appeared, who appeared at a WrestleMania, I believe. WrestleMania 2. Former Chicago Bear. I think WrestleMania 2 and 11, I want to say, but 2 for sure. Uh, Bears. Uh, Bears. Super Bowl Shuffle. Kyle, have you seen the Super Bowl Shuffle? Have you seen that music video? I don't think so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you before you go to bed, get on the phone, type in Super Bowl Shuffle, and, and just, just let me know what you think. And if any listener, any of the Impact Tribe, the loungers have seen the Super Bowl Shuffle, let me know what you think. I'm sure the Chris Steele show, he's seen it for sure. But uh, a couple notes I had on this, uh, Kyle, was that Don made sure to remind us that he created the Ultimate X. This is a, a bit that goes back to Don and Disco Inferno feuding over podcasts on who actually came up with the Ultimate X idea. They both claim that they did it. 
But Don made sure to remind us on TV that he created the Ultimate X. So, uh, and I believe Disco said something about that too when he made his appearance on Thanksgiving. But um, hell of a match, though, Trent. But I gotta say, uh, Jake Christ is the king of the cutter right now, man. And I'm saying this right now here on the podcast, and you can at me if you disagree. Jake Christ, better cutter than Randy Orton. You know what? Here's the thing which you might get uh, get added on is that both Jake and Dave have a great cutter. Mm. So I think you might have some people going, no, Dave is better. Because Dave's the one who had that went viral with that one when he jumped off the wall. He ran up a wall and did a cutter. And Dave's cool too with the cutter. So it's got to be a Chris brother thing, but I'm telling you right now Chris cutters. Now, I'm not saying that the RKO isn't a household name because it is, but Jay Christ, he can execute it from really out of nowhere. When Randy, it's not really out of nowhere. But Jake could hit his out of nowhere. And the way he ended this match here with the, the one off the top rope, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Top rope cutter. Jake is qualified for the Ultimate X. So it's going to be four slots in that Ultimate X come uh, homecoming January 6th. Jake's the first one to qualify. We go from that to Moose and Tessa in the back. They cut a promo as only they could, Kyle. Fantastic. Moose with this, this super... Better than you, elite type of character that he's playing is fantastic. Fantastic. One of my favorite, favorite things on Impact Wrestling is is just Moose and the whole the whole aura that he gives off now. Like he's just calm, cool, collected in him in himself nowadays. And team that with Tesla, I think you got a great uh, great little mixed tag coming up later in the night. Trent, I was a little confused. I got to ask you a question. Uh, you know where my mind always is. Uh, did Moose call Alicia Edwards a skeezy, or did he call Taya a skeezy? It's like your skeezy wife. Was he talking about Johnny's wife or Eddie's wife? I think it's, it's, I, from what I understood, he was talking about Johnny's wife. I know, but Taya. then he, he did bring up quick, you, you know, I know what I did to Eddie Edwards, and it doesn't matter. I could be wrong. Yeah, Not sure I, who, I, I thought it, it was Taya. If we're wrong, let us know, guys. I thought it was Taya, though. Yeah, it, it was just weird to hear somebody uh, refer to you know, somebody's wife is skeezy on a wrestling show. I think that was a first. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> hey, it's Impact After Dark. You never That's know what, what they said. do, man. I, we get glory hole chance. I mean, Impact uh, Wrestling just taking it to a new level. Awesome. It's awesome. Uh, we go from that to uh, Dark Alley. Not just Alley. Dark Alley making her debut, uh, co- accompanied by Sue Young, taking on Heather Monroe, who has been on uh, a week or two before. And uh, this was interesting, Kyle. I don't know. I The notes I had on this one were that Allie seems completely different. So I like that she's she's able to – the body language, the style was totally different, new gear. She kind of committed to that. But I think the crowd was uh, was unsure how to react. I think the crowd didn't know how to react on this one. For and, most uh, of the show, man, there were so many spots throughout this entire show, Trent, where like – um. There would be something going on in the show, and like the crowd, either a the audio just wasn't you know handled as well as it should have been, and the crowd noises weren't uh, picked up for the broadcast uh, as clearly as they could have been, or maybe the crowd was just dead, and maybe a lot of people didn't show up this day. I don't know what the deal was, but there were a lot of spots throughout this episode, Trent, where like. The crowd just wasn't reacting to stuff. Like, what I mean by that is, in my head, like, during certain spots, I could hear, you know, the noise of what the, you know, how the crowd would be reacting, but it would just be a strange, awkward moment because I'd hear it and it's just dead silent. And I think that was amplified in this match because people were just confused by Dark Alley. I don't think they knew how to react to her. She's such a, she went from being, like, such a baby face to this it's a drastic but, uh, change drastic change but uh dark alley takes the win and uh she she t- you know she gets the mandible claw on heather she puts that on sue instructs her to and then kira comes down she turns on kira it's officially on the shit's on now Allie is, has turned on kira but um 
And then, you know, they, they walked off. One of the things during this match, though, I, I, I have mentioned it before, but, dude, they need to really play with the lights during entrances and exits. Sue Young's entrance and exit, if you're playing that music or even Dark Alley, the light should not be on. Kill the lights a little bit. Let's some let you know, give it some aura. We gotta play aura. We gotta play characters a little bit. We need those lights off. We need to have to create that illusion, that feeling. You know, if she's trying to be all dark and it's like bright light on her, it doesn't it doesn't really sell it as much as it could to me. But um, that aside, that aside, there was a quote by Don Callis during this match that I know you liked. I had it written down too. After all, God, I think I mentioned to you I didn't. But there's like there's a quote about Gon Callis and his and his wardrobe that he mentioned during this match. Do you want to uh, you want to tell the people what that that line was that 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 popped you? Quick little shopimpact.com ad, and you know Josh quickly plugs a Johnny Impact T-shirt, to which Don Callis replies, "Oh, I have that. I have that one already." And then Don Callis goes on to say that uh, he was wearing his Johnny Impact shirt out on the Las Vegas Strip, and he uh, told some guys out there he was going to take them to Slam Town. And Josh responds, uh, what did they do? And Don quickly just, uh, uh, they called the police. So it was very quick. <laughs> quick plug during this match also, guys. December 14th, don't forget, there's a Twitch special called Ohio versus Everything. It's Impact with Rockstar Pro Wrestling out of Dayton. And then December 21st, they're doing a one-night-only taping. back. It's called Back to Cali. Uh, that's going to be back over there in California. I forgot the partner promotion's name. But that's the one in Northern California they, they've done a couple with already. All right, Kyle, we go from that to uh, Willie Mack, Rich Swan, And uh, they're in the back. One of, the, one of the lines that Willie mentioned here was he goes, wow, versus everything, huh? Yeah, they're going to they're gonna be versus my elbows, my fists, my feet, everything. And Rich is like, no, don't worry, man. Don't worry. Don't worry, dog. Well, I'll be out there and this and that. Good, good, good perception there, Kyle. I think we got to keep our eyes on Rich, even though he's so unassuming. I, I think you're right, though. We got to keep an eye on Rich. Where do you think it's going, though? I mean, what do you think Rich could turn on on the Mac? Oh yeah. I don't know, man. Or could the Mac turn on the Rich? I Ooh. have no clue. It's going to be one or the other. It's going to go one way or the other. But these two are not sticking together. I'm telling you that right now, Trent. I smell it. I smell it in the air. Treason is coming. Treason. Good word. Good word. Uh, we go from that. Speaking of words, good words. We're going to the next match. It's the Daisy Hit Squad versus Damian Hyde and and uh, Damian uh, uh, Damian Hyde and Damian Lemons. Did I write that down wrong? I, da- I so. no 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 no. It was uh, Damian Hyde and Martin Lemons. Marvin Lemons. Mar- Marvin Lemons, okay. Marvin I, Lemons, Martin Lemons. That, uh, that's my, my fault, guys. I thought I had that written down perfectly. I totally botched that, that gentleman's name. I think his name is Marvin Lemons. Marvin, Marvin Lemons. I know there was an S at the end. It wasn't Lemon. It was Lemons. Either Marvin or Martin. Something like that. Okay, all right. Well, it was the Daisy Hit Squad, which I want to point out to Josh Matthews. Daisy, not Desi. For God's sake, put that pronunciation down right, please. But um, they took on the Lem- uh, David Hyde and Martin Lemons. And Lemons actually wears yellow, which I thought was hilarious. His whole gear is yellow. I'm like, I don't know why it popped me. I was like, well, this guy's, this guy's committed. But not only that, Kyle, this guy takes bites out of Lemons, raw Lemons, mid-match. Mid-match. And just that's how he hulks up. He, he takes out like two, three Lemons and just bites into them and hulks up and goes right for it. But uh, the lemon should be considered a weapon, man. You take one of those, squirt somebody in the eye. It's oh, no joke. It's not a walk dude, in the park. Not a walk in the park at all, man. Le- lemons could burn. Lemons burn. Speaking of lemons, Don Callis had a had a great line about lemons here. Um, he mentioned something about lemons. You you remember that line, Kyle? Oh yeah, he said he likes lemons in his vodka. More with the vodka. Yeah, Josh, like you like lemons? He goes, I hate them. I like them with vodka though. <laughs> Which was again pop me. Uh, this match had a lot, a lot that, that got me laughing. But Don also, he gave a lot of of uh, background on um, on Gama Singh's career, which I liked because that's one thing. Like if you're a new fan, you weren't familiar with Gama Singh, uh, you, you probably didn't know much about him, dude. He's a very accomplished, very accomplished wrestler, and uh, Gama Singh, you know. So Don is really close friends with him. 
outside of the uh, the business, and he gave some really good you know history on who Gama Singh is and you know what he's done in his career. So that was cool. I, I liked it. I liked that it was. Um, I like that it, it, we got to learn, learn a little bit more about Gama Singh. And, Kyle, it was Manny Lemons. Manny. Not Martin. You were close. Manny. Marvin, Lemons. Martin, Sammy, Samsonite. I was so close. We can just call him Lemons. But the Daisy Hit Squad takes the win on that one. They look good. I think they needed a good squash to really kind of establish a little more. More and more. Get my brown boys over. They got I got their back. All about, all about, I'm down for the brown. We go from that, Kyle. Seidel and Page backstage. Ego's pumping up. He's just focused on pumping up about their match later. Seidel's trying to give him a motivational talk. Ego's kind of just zoning out, listening, and he's like, I'll see you in the ring. Uh, what do you think about this? What do you think? You think if you break him up, too soon to have the match? What are we doing here? I mean, I just got the vibe that Paige is over this third eye shit, but... He does a lot though. When he gets out there, he's 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 pumping the third eye. Yeah, a yeah, lot. yeah. But just you know, in this quick little segment, you know, Matt was uh, Matt Seidel is talking about it, and Ethan Page just seems completely just you know uninterested. But he's like, whatever. Yeah, third eye, whatever the hell. Don't focus shit. on his match. Uh, we go from the GW and flashback this week was uh, from Vegas. It was Chris Saban and Bully Ray setting up their match when Saban cashed in. Option C, and he had his world title match the following week, which he did end up winning. I'm trying to remember, Kyle, what venue that was in Vegas when uh, Saban went for option C. Because it's kind of cool that he uh, he also did option C in Vegas. Kind of like a little history there, a little history lesson, which that was nice to see. So after Seidel and Page, we kick it over to Mackenzie Mitchell, who's backstage with Katarina. And she's talking about, you know, how uh, she's not too happy about the losses, but... She's got backup, and she introduces us to her backup, her enforcer, Ruby Reyes. Uh, Ruby Reyes is basically like a another like just another tough chick, man. She's like a Jordan Grace type of chick. She looks like another killer, and uh, that killer is now uh, in the corner of Katarina. So this is a nice little feud with Jordan Grace and Katarina going on, man. And, and Katarina reminded us uh, what happened to Grado and Joe Hendry after they crossed her. I like that. I, 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 axed. Yes, I was. I was happy that she made sure to kick back to that. Like he's like they crossed me, and you see what happened to them. Exactly. Which I, I like that. That was cool. Good little throwback to remind us that she's done. She's got power when she needs to have it. Uh, Katarina. gorgeous. I like looking at Katarina. I'm, I'm a I got, I got to mention Trent uh, Ruby Race. Uh, one look at her, I just can't help but think Ruby Race and Jordan Grace, Race and Grace, would be the ultimate women's tag team in Impact Wrestling, and they would be completely unstoppable, and they would tear down everything in their path. Race and Grace. Race and Grace. it right now. Race and Grace. Race and Grace coming at you live. Um, I am, I am eager to see this match. She looked like she was a she was a tough chick, man. I want to see what she does. That's gonna be that's gonna be some heavyweight women's action going on. So let's uh, see what happens in there. All right, but then Kyle, we kick it over from that. Mackenzie Mitchell, she goes and finds Eli Drake outside of management's office. Uh, this is after the GW one flashback, which was um, which was uh, from Vegas back in 2013. Chris Saban and Bully Ray were saving exercise option C and cashed in for his uh, his world title shot, which happened the following week. I'm still trying to remember, Kyle, what, what venue that was in Vegas. I can't quite put my finger on what venue they went to in Vegas uh, in 2013 where Chris Saban exercised option C. But uh, it's a hot crowd that night. That was pretty cool to see. And then the following week, he won the world title. But, yeah, so Mackenzie Mitchell was in the back with Eli Drake, who was coming out of management's office, and he comes to find out. We got. We know who those balloons are from. Those balloons are cordially inviting him to the monsters ball with a best at homecoming. God damn it, Kyle! Homecoming, monsters ball, old school abyss. What do you think about that? Eli Drake versus Abyss, monsters ball, homecoming. Yes. Not bad. Uh, I mean, the monster comes home. Abyss goes back to the asylum. Uh, 
I'm on board for this. Um, I don't know if this is where I was exactly expecting it to go. And it, it can still change, Trent. The card is always subject to change. But uh, Eli Drake versus the Monster Abyss at Homecoming. Not bad. I'm happy with that. I am still convinced that this is a... This sets up something with Crazy Steve, maybe Decay. I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. Just a thought. Somebody in our comments, one of our listeners, mentioned that the balloons were from... Uh, were from... Um, Joey Janela. He's like, he's like, mark my words. Those, those balloons are from Joey Janela. And I'm like, oh, that's a interesting theory. But Joey Janela, this was that was McGuedro. Our buddy McGuedro said that. He said it was from um, Joey Janela. Um, and Joey, he's still injured. And I, from what I understand, Kyle, I don't know if we talked about this, but did you know? I found out through some rumor mill that Eli Drake's match at Bound for Glory that ended up being against Ellsworth was actually supposed to be against Joey Janela, but he got hurt like the week before. Uh, so, you know, Trent, I uh, I try to stay away from the poop sheets, but I, I did hear that one as well. That would have been interesting. Joey Janela making an impact appearance. But, so, but, but, but Trent, Maguadro jumping the gun, telling us, mark his words, those balloons were going to belong to Joey Janela, and the balloons came from Abyss. From so abyss. You, know what, you know what that means, Trent? What's that? McGuadro, dummy of the week. Dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, McGuadro, you jumped the gun. Dummy. Yeah. Jumped the gun. We love you, but you jumped the gun. Kyle got you this week. Dummy. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. McGuadro. That, gotcha. That's what you get for going against us on the first episode. Dummy. Yeah. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. comes full circle. That's right. It comes full circle. All right. After Eli finds out he's cordially invited to the Monsters Ball, we get to the back and it's the Rascals round tabling it, smoking, having a good time. Talking about what the hell is going on. And all of a sudden, they got a fourth Scarlet Smoke show. No, shows no, Trent, Trent, I'm not going to sit here and let you just act like they were smoking and talking and acting like they were having casual conversation. Yeah, respect what the hell were they talking about with the grizzly bear? What what were they talking about? Did you guys know there's a bear in this hotel? Like a mountain and a bear? He goes, why is there a bear? Like, they were, they were, they were puzzled by the bear in the hotel. And, uh... They were, they were they were tripping out, but then rascals, they had a, rascals. rascals. Wherever yeah. you're getting your weed, man, let me know. My weed doesn't do that. I'm not talking to you about grizzly bears and stuff like that. So so rascals, wherever, wherever you're getting your shit, you know, medical, off, off the streets, whatever. Let me know. I need some of that. Hey, who who said, who said it's weed? They've never come out and said it's weed, Kyle. This could be them just having a good time. It could be a smoky room. Hey, yeah. they, could, they could be making Totina's pizza rolls, man. Like, could, that could be oh, steam coming man. from the oven. I love Totina's pizza rolls. God damn, I grew up on that shit. Totino's. They still sell those? They, I'm sure they do. They, they could oh. be doing a, a number of things, Trent. That's right. Oh. They, there's never been any clear indication of marijuana use, so you have to put that out there. That's very true. There is no clear indication. But Scarlet I'd shows like up. To think, I would like to think that they are. Yeah, wishful thinking. Scarlet shows up, mm. tells them, hey, I like what you guys do. I like your style. Zachary Wentz goes, when do we get a fourth chair? And then, uh, which I thought was hilarious. And then uh, Trey's trying to like Mac, put the Mac on Scarlet. She tells him, hey, keep trying. I got my eye on you. And then she disappears. Smoke show out. That was awesome. Loved it. Uh, we go from that. Matt Seidel, Ethan Page, X Division or um, Ultimate X Qualifier match. For homecoming it would seem like a very friendly encounter to me they were third eyeing all over the place third eye this third eye that they're both third eyeing to each other um but page takes the win page qualifies for the ultimate x which i wasn't expecting man that is a high flying type of match page is a big guy kyle i don't know what do you think you think you think it should have been sidell you think it's kind of odd that page took the win on this one Nope. Uh, Seidel is a, a veteran, and uh, he was – I'm not going to say that he was passing the torch to Paige, but 
I mean, in a way, yeah, he's passing the torch to Paige. Uh, and that's not to say that Seidel is going to go off into the sunset and, you know, g- assume more of a veteran role. But, I mean, just look at what's going on here. Matt Seidel, Trent, how long have you been watching Matt Seidel wrestle, honestly? How long have you been watching Matt? Oh, 15 years at least. That's what I'm saying. He's been around for so long. And how long have you been watching Ethan Page? I mean, Ethan Page is the younger talent. Uh Five years, maybe? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just natural. Ethan Page was supposed to win this match. That's just how it's supposed to be, damn it. All right. Well, hey. But he can go for a big guy. For a big guy, Ethan Page can move in that ring. He is very impressive. Very impressive. And he's a very nice guy. If you ever meet him, he's a nice nice guy. He's a former AAW champion, by the way. Short reign, but he had the title. He, uh, you know, he, he was he was pretty exclusive to us for a long time. So I got to see him quite a bit before. So I in your own, your own personal experiences with Ethan, he was a nice guy, cool dude, super cool dude. He, you know, he's one of those people. I got to say, the one thing I always remember about him, he says hi and shakes hands with every single person in the building when he walks in, every single one, which I think is impressive. Dude, he like legit makes the rounds to like even the guy like. Like sweeping up and like the 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 building maintenance, he shakes everybody's hand. He's a good dude. I, I appreciate that about him. Uh, we, all right, so Ethan Page in the Ultimate X, which is going to be very interesting. We kick it over to Shady Acres from there, Kyle. Shady Acres, which you want to tell the people what Shady Acres is? I, I've uh, spent a few seasons over at the old Shady Acres myself, Trent. Have you? Hey, all right. Well, you're experienced in that. And uh, hopefully you had a roommate as cool as Eddie did. But uh, Eddie was there, kind of going nuts, kind of getting antsy. And he looks across the room, and who's uh, who's checked in with Eddie? Who's checked in the Shady Acres with Eddie? Uh, Raven. There? Playing a nice game of chess with Raven. Raven. Raven, the legendary Raven. is in Shady Acres with Eddie Edwards. And he's telling him all the stuff. Jamin's like, eh, what's the big deal? I check myself in here once a month, willingly. And Eddie's like, I shouldn't be here, freaking out. Why'd you Eddie's swatting the chessboard like an angry old man. Oh, yeah. There's a guy in the corner. I think he was shirtless, just kind of like waving against the wall. That guy was nuts. But then they blamed the chessboard swatting on that guy. <laughs> and then when the orderly came in to attend to that guy, Raven stole his key out of his back pocket and gave it to Eddie. And said, here you go. Here's your key to freedom. But uh, I love that Raven made references to the ECW storylines, like the Dreamer and Sandman one. He goes, eh, yeah, remember when that guy stole my girlfriend and I made his life hell? Yeah, there's another time where this guy, I stole his entire family, including his little kid. Yeah, I'm nuts, too. It's all You didn't good. go far enough. You didn't go far enough. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. He's like, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't go far enough. <laughs> I was like, dude, I tripped out when he said that. I was like... Awesome. I popped. I was like, dude, Raven, 100% still has it. 100%. I mean, just, you know what, man? Impact Wrestling giving us Raven on TV in 2018. Awesome. Come on. Come on, Trent. Awesome. For Raven, yeah. for Impact Wrestling. Oh, absolutely. Had to, had to do Never it. More. Never more. Never more. I Love mean, it. honestly, Trent, I this is one of those moments where, like, you know, as wrestling fans – and all the wrestling fans right now listening can uh, relate to me when I say this. We all have those wrestlers that at one point or another in your childhood or your teen years or your older adult years, whatever it was, you just really just clinged on to and just like worshipped. Man, there was years of my childhood where I thought Raven was just this like larger than life, like godly figure. I I would dress up like him, man. I, there's me too. Me too. Back oh, in uh, around eh, my my early teen years, I I would tie my uh, my flannel around my uh, waist. There, I had uh, a little embarrassing to say. I might have had a nice leather jacket on top of there. Uh, you know, I wanted to be just like Raven. I thought he was the coolest guy ever. Oh, dude, me too, hundred percent. I was I was a big fan of Raven. Dressed the same way, had that grunge thing going on. Uh, hu- huge, huge influence. I loved him. And, and a smart mind of the business. So I, I loved it. Doesn't Great matter to see how Raven. old he is, man. Doesn't matter yeah. how old he is, what year he it is. I, I'm happy to see him. He, he could talk, and that's what mattered. We cut from that, Kyle. The Lucha Bros facing off with LAX. Very lovey-dovey exchange. 
They're starting off, hey, bro, this, hey, bro, that. Thank you for the shot. Said, oh, and that, blah, blah, blah. And um, Conan comes up. He's like, all right, hey, I'm glad to see it's peaceful. We're all good. We're, you know, this is cool. This is cool. Okay, all right, all right. I'm happy with you guys. And then Penta, Pentagon is the instigator. Because he's like, he looks at, at Tantan. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, and he's like, oh, soy, cero, miedo. And then that's it. Santana's like, what the fuck? And then, like, shoves him. They all start kind of shoving. And then Cohen's like, you see? What the fuck? This is exactly what I was talking about. Ah! And he, like, storms off. Which I was like, that's exactly what he was saying a week ago. He just got through telling you guys, shit. This is what tears people apart. And that's the, he, he called it. He called it. It's already on. Now, now Conan's pissed off at everybody. Conan's upset. You pissed off the boss. Now what are we going to do? You know what what Conan, do? Conan seemed a little more hyped in this one. Like, he's usually, like, chill. Usually, like, just a he chilled out chill. guy. But he's, he was real hype in this uh, little, uh, what, what would you call this? Uh, well, what would you, t- see, we throw around the word promo vignette. What, what would I call this right here, Trent? Soiree. The soiree, okay. In this <laughs> soiree. You notice Conan seems to be a little more hyped up than usual. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was on, man. He, he he took his. He had a monster. He had, he took a can of monster earlier that day because he was he was he was sizzling, man. This guy was on fire. So yeah, Conan. Well, first was def- off, Trent wrestlers do cocaine. They don't drink monster. Sec- second off, second off. Well, Conan's old school. The new the new generation they show up to the indie shows with the zero calorie monsters and stuff. Conan's from the cocaine generation, so get that right. Uh, I just, well, just, keep, just try, there goes try. our there goes our sponsorship, our potential try. sponsor from ImpactWrestling.com. Thank you. Anyway, go ahead. That's the truth, man. That's the truth. Am I wrong? But yeah, it, no, no, you're not wrong. <laughs> Trent, Trent. Now think of it though. I, all my dreams, all my dreams just shattered for Impact saying, you know what, guys, I like your style. We want to make you the official podcast of Impact Wrestling. We're like, yeah. And then they go do what they just did to all these celebrities, and they go back into our old shows, and they go, oh, you insinuating our guys do cocaine? Yeah, right. deal's right. off the table. Deal's off the table. Nowadays, wrestlers show up to the show with zero-calorie cans of Monster, and back in the day, they used to show up with cocaine. That's not wrong. That's true. Here, you know what? Just just take my shovel and keep digging the hole deeper, too. Keep going. Keep going. You All I'm tr- trying to say here, Trent, is uh, Conan's attitude has changed. Conan is acting differently. That's all I'm pointing out. I, I dream daily that Don and Josh and Sanjay and, and Ed and, Trent, and, and Scott Trent. and Scott say, have you guys heard that Total Nonstop Impact podcast? Ah, those kids, those bastards are doing some good work. Bring him in here and let's have him be the official podcast. Oh, oh, what, what, what's, what's this hash? So they talk cocaine. Oh, we can't have that. We're, we're, we're owned by Anthem. We're a Canadian, an honorable Canadian company. We cannot have that kind of talk. Deals off the table. It's over. I mean, Trent, Dream is you're, you're acting like I haven't sailed that ship weeks ago. Uh, you know, uh, you, you could make a list of things I've said on the show that I probably shouldn't have said, but that's okay. The rascals thing we can get away with because they're implying it. You know, it's like, all right, you guys are putting on that 70s show here. But, dude, the cocaine, we're done. We're done. Dead in the water. Thank God for the Thank God for the, the Impact Tribe, the Impact Lounge. Thank God. That's all we got left. That's all we got left. Wrong, but, wrongfully accusing your family members of having money in oil fields. That's okay. But <laughs> one, one little cocaine joke and Trent's offended. Uh, well, it's, I'm not, it's on me that it's, I'm not offended. I'm just I'm I'm worried about uh, those, those those that potential dream I had to for impact to go. You guys are great, but you had to talk about drugs. You're out of here. Get out of here. But uh, it's all right, Kyle. We still got each other. That's yeah. right. We yeah. got PQ. We got we got Row and Adam. We got the lounge. Everybody. We got everybody. Even 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 the two assholes who thumbs downed us on the last video. We still got them too. But all right, main event time, everybody. Main event time. Before we get we get out to the main event, Johnny and Tessa are backstage hyping it up. Uh, Johnny, I never, I just don't like him on the mic. Kyle, uh, am I wrong, man? T- guys, am I wrong? Impact Tribe, am I wrong here? Johnny on the mic is so ineffective. I think you're a little tough on him, man. He's chill. He's cool. You know, he's cool. He's cool, bad guy. You know, 
too cool. He's not even a bad guy, though. He's a good guy. He's supposed to be a good guy. I, I meant, like, badass guy. Like, cool badass. Not, like, bad evil villain. Not heel, so to speak. Yeah. Like he's but he's, he's a cool badass, man. He's cool. He's trying to impact. Oh, a line by... Takes a line. Slam down. It's true. It takes Ty to slam town nightly. Um, a great line that Taya threw in was, she's like, I'm going to kick Tessa so hard that Tully feels it. I'm like, dude, money. Money line. I thought I know, Johnny said that. What's that? I thought Johnny said that. Oh, maybe, am I wrong? I'm sorry. I didn't I think Johnny was talking about kicking Tessa, but maybe I'm wrong, man. Or, I'm sorry, you're right. He said Ty is going to kick Tessa so hard that Tully feels it. Johnny did say it. You're right. You're right. All right. Well, I knew the line was said. You got All this, right? Trent. See, see, Trent, when, when you take your notes, don't just take the note. You know, write, don't just write the quote. Write who wrote the quote. You know what I mean? How about I take this quote and turn it sideways and shut All right. No, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, main event time, guys. Ty, uh, Valkyrie, and Johnny Impact taking on Tessa Blanchard and Mr. Impact Wrestling, Moose. I love to kick this match off, Kyle. I love that Johnny gave his sunglasses to a kid in the audience. Very Bret Hart of him. Loved it. Had a, had an old school hero feel to it. The kid looked happy as shit. Did you, I always wanted to be that kid. I always wanted to be the Bret Hart sunglasses kid. Never got to be. Never got to be. I had to buy my own pair. I got him signed though, but I got to buy my own pair. What about you, Kyle? Were you a were you the sunglasses kid? I I always wanted to be more of like one of those people that Sandman dumped the beer down their throats, you know? Yeah, that's see, see Kyle knows how to have fun. I'm sitting here trying to collect fucking sunglasses. Kyle's like, I want to get hammered, with Sandman. Yeah, fuck fuck your sunglasses. I want to get hammered. <laughs> fuck the beer. your sunglasses. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, you're right, Kyle. You that is more fun, but um. Moose, uh, <laughs> this is one of the best. Dude, I laughed a lot in this episode. Moose wants a kiss to start the match. He wants a kiss from Ty to start the match. I was want... so confused by that. <laughs> he wants a kiss. <laughs> he, well, you know, as Moose calls every woman that he encounters his girlfriend. He calls, That's he calls... the new Moose, dude. The new Moose is this, like, uh, <laughs> pervert, I guess. He's a bit of a pervert. Oh, dude, it was great. Chauvinistic, as you like to say. It was great. He just like wants a kiss, and I was like, "Get away! From, what the fuck are you talking about?" But uh, Moose is getting a little funky. Kid Ref starts yelling at Moose at one point, which I th- again thought was hilarious. Is watching Kid Ref try to like yell at this giant man, like yell rule- rules at Moose. Like, what are you doing, Kid Ref? What are you doing? I don't, I don't get it. Don't even bother. But um, Tessa. Tessa taps to you know to Taya's new finisher that uh, looks like an STF, kind of like an STF, and uh, like a modified, maybe more of a pulling STF. But Indian Tessa ta- Deathlock STF is what people online were calling it. The okay. Indian Deathlock STF. I, and that's another thing, Trent. These motherfuckers and the, the no branding of the we, moves. Exactly. Um, the Daisy Hit Squad earlier in the show, they did that killer uh, finishing move. They didn't tell us what it was called. That's what I'm saying. Like we, Stop we talked it, about. Impact. Stop. We talked about it on last week's episode. You guys need to. We need branding on these finishers. We need a solid finisher. Like this is the finisher for this guy, and we are all waiting for you to say it and, and look and see it happen and call it out together. Again, I don't. I'm not a WWE fan whatsoever at all. No, no. But they. But that but is they, one thing they do right. They do hundred percent right. Is they man? They they brand the finisher for even the lowest tier guy that everybody knows what that fucking finisher is. I mean, dude, the RKO was a diamond cutter made famous by Diamond Dallas Page. Dude, most people now think think Diamond Dallas Page ripped it off from Randy Orton at this point because they have branded the shit out of that thing. I mean, just little things like that. They brand everybody's finisher to the point where, like, you, it is tattooed in your brain. Impact needs to – finishers are one of the coolest parts of wrestling. It's one of the coolest parts of a wrestling match and a show is when you see your hero hit a finisher, boom, like, right there. You're waiting for it the whole match. It's awesome. That's a pop. I want to yell I want to yell what that finisher's name is. We need branding. Big time. But, anyway, Tessa taps out. It's uh, it gets a little nuts. They start brawling a little bit, back and forth brawl. Tessa's about to clock Taya with a chair, and who runs out, Kyle? Who runs out to make 
the save. Tell the people. Kill across. Go across. Stops Tessa from hitting Taya. I don't I don't know where any of this is going, man. Don't know where it's going. But it wasn't over yet. Because then Brian Cage ran out. And then and he got into a killer cross. And dude, at one point, he German suplexes killer cross. Cross stands right back up, unfazed. Not even nothing out of place. See that? The guy's a monster, dude. Total monster. I don't know if you saw that though. He 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 just took a, a stiff German and got right back up. Nuts. Uh, it's insane, man. Uh Killer Cross is such an intriguing character. It, I'm still stuck on that, man. And like we're supposed to be talking about the main event here, and we are, but I I, I just get so stuck on that. Why is Killer Cross so eager to just Help Johnny Impact and be around Johnny Impact. No idea. I mean, Johnny Super Impact confusing. is Impact World Champion, but that's really not the traditional way to seek out an opponent for a title shot. Now, I wonder if it's going to come down to this. If it's going to come down to the age old theory of keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Yeah, that's what it is. Maybe he's looking to get close, infiltrate the mind of Johnny Impact. That could be. I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm tossing that volley out to the world. Yeah, what do you guys I, think, I, we, well, I've been saying that for weeks, but it's just not panning out. Could be, man. We we could it could be going that way, but uh, ends with a uh, cage, Taya and Johnny in the ring facing down the heels. We're retreating, and um, I do I do like that they acknowledge that Cage and Johnny are our best friends or really good friends. And this match is, you know, it's, this is not personal. It's business. So Yeah, that, that was a little funny for me at the end. Like, usually the show ends with a fierce, like, face-off. Like, they're both ready to kill each other. But, like, Johnny and Brian just looking at each other like, well, no, we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do this. <laughs> this. This is what's going on, you know. This yeah. is what's happening. We're doing you know, this. It's like we're going we're gonna to kill each other. But, hey, it's right. I love you, buddy. You know, I do so, still love you. I just you know, another personal. But um, but guys, that was it. So yeah, um, the Taya and and Johnny take that win. The uh, the impact, Mister and Mrs. Impact, go ahead and get that, pick up that win. But that's it. That was the end of the December sixth episode of Impact on Pop Impact After Dark. Kyle, you like the episode? I loved it. I popped. It got me laughing all night. What did you think? Great episode, Trent. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching it. Uh, I'm going to pick a highlight of the night, Trent. Uh, my personal highlight of the entire show. Mm. I yeah. loved the opener, man. I loved Willie Mac and Jay Christ. Great opener. Great match. So they put on a stellar, stellar match. Willie Mac is so much more athletic than you think he would be. The guy's great. Chocolate Thunder, man. That's what Chocolate Thunder. Him. Chocolate Thunder. I, I I like his uh his very his very simple music for some reason I love it, but uh, all right cool, Willie Mac and the mini draw is your pick of the week, but uh, guys that brings us to the end. We really had fun with this one. I it was a, it, this wasn't Kyle. This episode was so good that it made it easy to review. Easy. I did not feel any pressure to to really to, you know find a way to make this one sound good. This was great. Uh, it wasn't a chore. It was truly a great episode. Uh, you breeze right through it. That's what I love about Impact right now. Uh, uh, the weekly TV show just moves along so quick. I, I watch it, and it doesn't feel like a two-hour TV show. Absolutely not. So that was it, guys. Let me tell you where you can find us and connect with us. You can find this this show this on our social media. Type in We Talk Impact on Twitter Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram. By typing in We Talk Impact, you'll see the Total Nonstop Impact podcast pop up. Give us a like. Leave some comments there. Connect with us there. You can also find this podcast wherever podcasts are found. Apple iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and now Spotify. Like, review, subscribe. Leave some comments. Tell a friend. Tell an enemy. Tell somebody. Tell Killer Cross. Tell Taya Valkyrie. Tell Lucha Brothers. Tell LAX. Tell Raven. Tell Eddie Edwards. Tell everybody. Tell Scott. 
Don, Ed Nordholm, Sanjay, Abyss. Guys, Conan's Coke dealer. Conan's, I guess, yes, whoever can, whoever's got stroke and impact, tweet them and tell them about the show, guys. Tell them how much you like the show. We are, I want to get their goddamn attention that we're doing this here and we're, we're reviewing it and we're really putting some heart into this review every week that we love the company and we're trying to connect with their fans Our because we're fans too. Tweet it to those guys, guys. Put it out there for us. Let's do this. We're the tribe. Let's do this together. We got this. But guys, connect with us. Let us know what you think. Give us feedback on this episode. Kyle, you got any goddamn thing else to tell these people? Anything? The only carnivore on the Serengeti is the alpha male. See you later, everybody.